capitals. Addressing the needs of gifted and talented students in mixed ability classes has aroused considerable debate, but little consensus. John Bailey has come to North London to see how two teachers are approaching it. Everybody jump to the I'm so funky fresh, fresh. Everybody jump to the I'm so funky fresh. That would sound quite nice on top of our boom cha cha. Boom. You can imagine it, yeah? All right, let's do it. Daniel Smith is in his fourth year as a music teacher at Capital City Academy in Wilsdon. He came here on the graduate teacher program. His love of music and rapport with his students are his great strengths. You're a musician? Yeah. Um, and you're not gigging? No, um, I mean, the, the way the story goes, obviously you've got, you got the Chinese whispers, but I was a musician in that we were a band held together by the lead singer. He was, I want to be a singer, I want to get signed. And we were all people that love music, the bass, the drums, the trumpet, the keyboard player, who all we went to college together. So we played on his demo circuit, which we were playing quite a lot. So um, that, that stopped. Um, then I had a son as well. So this life took over. I'm trying to make you make a melody to some specific chords. So we're going to still stick with that theme, but now we have a few more rules because we're going to deal with something called a waltz. This is the rhythm for it. As soon as you hear it, you recognize it. You've seen it in films, you've seen it in cartoons. Yeah, simple. Um, pa, pa. Yeah, you hear the music going along. Um, pa, pa, um, pa, pa, um, pa. Daniel's teaching a mixed ability year 10 class. It's the beginning of their GCSE course, and he's explaining some basic concepts. So, I want you to choose any groove, yeah, any chord progression. Go to the keyboard, um, pa, pa, with your left hand, but with the right hand, only use one note per um, pa, pa. So, for example, like this. Only use one here. Choose the groove, though. Choose a groove. At the moment, Daniel is not specifically targeting the more talented students, like Akin and Naomi. What experiences are these um, relatively gifted children going to have in this lesson? Uh, what might they do or experience that won't happen to the others? Um, well, it's a double lesson, so... Yeah. I would say, if it hadn't been a single lesson, they would get that breakthrough feeling that um, these lot might not reach. Okay. That moment of, oh, I've got it. Generally, you know, they'll get the chance to have that kind of relief or enjoyment out of having cracked the puzzle, as it were. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know. Yeah. Oops, there's no number two on that paper. Do it slower, it's too fast. I'll come back, it's too fast. Show me, play a normal triad. It's a normal triad. Yeah. Most of Daniel's time is taken up helping the majority of students to grasp the basics, like how to play a triad. Yeah, um, um, pa, pa. You should be using your left hand, shouldn't you? Yeah. What do you think of the idea of some basic skills starters? Yeah, I mean, the, the silly thing is they're all there, I've made them, but because it's, it's, it's my fault, it's like programming, because they're year 10s, I'm trying to treat them as year 10s. So little things like the triad, I've got a, ro a rotating PowerPoint, the first letter comes up, and they've got about two seconds in which to say the other t the three and five that are missing. That's so everything is there, but it's, it's like a program thing. It's like, oh, these year 10s, so I'm not going to do that. I want them to remember. We've been doing it three weeks. Why can't they remember? If they need to remember, look in a folder. But yeah, I could... You reckon that is a waltz? 
Yeah. yeah. So in terms of ums and pas, it's going um pa 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 um pa 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 um pa pa. Yeah. All right. Do we have, ever use any of our children to get stuff quicker to help to work with these? Yeah, every now and then. Okay. Um, because it's the beginning of the year. Yeah. Um, it's, we're at a stage where even these guys need to be listening and soaking it in. Okay. So, for example, they, in year nine is something we do a lot because the work would be at this level. Anyone who's good will finish and we'll just go, all right, go help someone else. And it's like we treat it like a, like a germ, like a virus. So it's like you help someone, they'll help someone and it just spread, spread, right, yeah, spread through yeah, the class. Obviously, we're at the beginning of the year, so it kind of reached a stage where we're still breaking in lots of new things. Put your name and date on this sheet, please. It's the final part of the lesson, and Daniel is asking the students to compose their own waltz by choosing a chord progression. So before we even look at the sheet, let's imagine this was a chord six, what would be my three notes? Imagine this is a chord six, what would be my three notes? Um, um, I can't remember. <laughs> A-C-E. Yeah, you yeah, shouldn't have shouted out, but yeah. A-C-E, right? Let's see how you go. But after a few minutes, it's clear that some students are struggling. Where's A on here? A is Down there. Yeah, A-C-E, isn't it? There are some children in the room who are at full stretch trying to understand um, how the triads work and, uh, and, and how you, you, what the first chord and the third chord and the fifth chord is and how to sequence it is. And they're just hanging onto their hats. And I think that for some children here, it's a bit of a blur. And that then when you go on to say, choose your groove, uh, fit some chords, fill in the symbols, put in the melody, <laughs> it's all too much. Yeah. They're sort of, some of these kids are out of the picture here. And as a matter of fact, I think in a mild way, Maybe you began to get a bit irritated yourself. <laughs> um, Probably. What chords? What chords are these? What are they? What are they? <laughs> what chords? What groove have you chosen? Um, From I, here. Ooh, I chose my one. This one. The one that we made up last Six, time. Six five four four. Right. So the ticket is not there. So you write it on. Put it. Convert it. So I can just look at it. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're having to do a lot of mopping up now, aren't you? Um, and it, it feels to me like it's keeping you away from some of the children who could do a bit more. Follow the sheet. I can't say anything else about that. that. Yeah, if you follow the sheet, it's just easy, yeah? Follow the sheet. I can't say anything else to you. If you just follow the sheet, it's easy. You see, what I'm thinking about your gifted and talented children, about your more able children in the room, is they didn't get very much of your time. Uh, in, in this lesson, I think there were two ways in which they could have been stretched. They could have gone and done some explaining uh, to other uh, students, which would, have, would probably not have been appropriate in this lesson because they were taking a lot of new material on themselves. So the other way to stretch them would have been for them to get more of your time and for you to be putting, on the one hand, putting more pressure on them uh, to, get the, uh, to get finished, and on the other hand, ask, you know, doing more extended questioning with them. Yeah. Uh, you know, checking on their Just understanding. Out, yeah. At Copeland School in Wembley, mixed ability classes in English are the norm. As you're going along, see if you can think about the themes to write in here, OK? OK. Here's the read. John's come to watch Fiona O'Sullivan, a young head of faculty who's only been teaching for three years. What was it like when you first started? It was tough. I won't lie, it was quite tough at first, especially being quite young, being female. Some of the boys in particular kind of pushed their luck a little bit with regards to behaviour. But I spent, I'd say, the first term working very hard on the behaviour side of things. And then after that, you can think more about the learning that's taking place in the lesson. So she wanted to teach us. Fiona's okay. Year 11 class right, that is studying the classic that text kind. To Kill a Mockingbird and its exploration of racism in 1930s America. We finished reading part one, so we're just going to find out a little bit more about it by looking at the different characters, themes and events that we've heard about, OK? Fiona's approach is different from Daniel's. She differentiates by giving higher ability students like Sophie, 
Neelam and Richus more demanding worksheets than the rest of the class. I like to really stretch them. I ask them open questions and then once I get an answer to the question, I'll then ask them another one to draw on what they've said. So hopefully they get to the stage where they're really analysing the points they make. Richards, I'm going to ask you a question now about Mrs Jubos. Nora said that she's quite brave. Did we always think she was brave or do you think that's something that developed later on? It developed after her death. Good. And through which character did we find out more about Mrs Jubos? Atticus. OK, can you remember anything that he told us? Um, he said that she wanted to die with, with her senses about her. Good. Well done. Yeah. So that shows true bravery. Well done. So the gifted and talented are getting, they're getting open questions and they're getting some questions stringy. That's right. So I answer a question and you'll say, tell me a bit more. That's or, right. Or, or in what, what other circumstance might that happen? So I'm being pulled along that way. Mm -hmm. Those of you in group one, I'd like you to put the character cards in this column, then match the descriptions to the characters and finally match the themes to the appropriate characters and descriptions. In this theme card activity, the majority of the class is in group one. The more able students, in group two, have to do a little extra. Those of you in group two don't get the theme cards. You think of the themes that you think can be linked to the characters and then write them in the last column. OK. That's Atticus. That's Atticus. Yeah. Yeah. Atticus. Yeah. 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 You have to be quiet so we can see that. Mm. Mm. It's like traditional life. I think this one. Although the higher ability students are doing more challenging work, John feels Fiona could adopt a more radical approach. Traditional life. If we took them out into a withdrawal room and you wanted to really engage them, and really you know, give them a good rinsing. What sort of things might we do with them in, in a circumstance like that? Um, perhaps the group interaction may be slightly more dynamic because they would all be, you'd assume, on the same level and they would be demanding answers from each other where normally in a class I would ask the follow-up questions. I've got one too, which is um, we might make the extension work, move from it being uh, to more of the same to being something, um, th there's a frightening character in the book. Um, if you wanted to portray them as a character in The Simpsons, what devices might you use? Yeah. So that you're banging them on the side of the head and saying, step right back uh, and get into the whole authorial and, and, and yeah. imaginative world and see, what, and see what you do with it. So they were people, but they lived like animals. Who's it talking about? The Yules, good, well done. Think of the choice of the word animals, OK? What does that depict? What vision of them do we get? OK? Can we think of any ways whereby we could accelerate that group within the context of a classroom? Um, perhaps they would take, instead of just doing a different task or answering questions in a more analytical way, perhaps they would take more of a lead role in some of the activities. So perhaps if I was having mixed ability groupings within the mixed ability class, perhaps the gifted and talented pupils could take on a role at a higher level which demanded more of them. Great. And I would also like to see that, that advanced group working separately on occasion and being put under pressure in several ways. One is to have a, a quite elaborate task to do that might involve them making a big sideways jump getting up into that synthesising and, and speculative kind of framework right. and see them evaluating each other's work in the course of doing that and see how much we can get out of them. It's a month later and John is returning to see if the two teachers are now pushing their more able students harder. He starts with Fiona. Imagine you are being interviewed by the Maycomb Tribune, the newspaper. Fiona has changed her approach and she's put the more able students in a separate group. 
Whilst the majority work on questions to ask later in the lesson, the gifted and talented get into character. You are all the different people in the community. You're very diverse. Imagine you've all been interviewed. And in the article, the journalist has written down quotes that you've said. You're going to write the quotes for your character, about two, on the A3 paper in quite large writing with the pens provided. OK? And you've got ten minutes. Hell yeah. I'm fine. Who are you? Who are you? That's good. Well, you're obviously gutted. You just lost the court case. Have you thought yeah. on the What does There's not really anything to say, is there? You tried your best. You tried your best because he doesn't say anything at the end of the case. He just walks away. It demanded more thinking of them. I feel it really stretched them because it required them to sit down, think about their character and how their character could be represented in a small sound bite. I, I never give an opinion the whole book. So they've done something that on the one hand has, has, has got some qualitative differences from what the rest of the form are doing. But the, the neat trick from my point of view, at least I was very impressed by it, um, is it's going to be a task that's complementary to what the rest of the class are doing. Yeah. Because at the end, they're going to be, they're going, they're going to be united um, with the activity at the end. Before that final activity, there's another task where the class moves around, so one of the more able students is in each mixed ability group. In your groups, you will produce one full paragraph on their character and how their character acts during and after the court case. She worry when the kids go missing. Though. Yeah, she does. She goes to court. She stops the court case. She goes into court with a note and she hands it to Atticus, and they basically stop the case for a minute while Atticus tells Judge Taylor, "Oh, my kids are missing, and I think I'm going to have to go." She, her position in the house here is to be a cook. She's employed to be a cook, but she, she cares about the kids more than she cares about the kids. There was a gifted and talented pupil in each of the groups, um, and they were taking a lead role. She thought it was patronising. Rounding off the last sentence, please, Year 11. With the use of words. In that middle activity, um, if I'm verbal and social and imaginative, um, I'm going to like that a lot. So that, that's right. so that that group at the front desk um, got on with it really well. Yeah. I noticed one or two other trios or pairings um, were a bit slower. What's your feeling about that? Um, I think it's completely to do with the learning styles. In each lesson, I try to provide a variety of activities to cater to these learning styles. So there will be times within a lesson where the activity um, does not demand a pupil's favourite learning style and therefore they won't succeed as well as the other kids. I do think that most of the groups worked well in terms of communication. And again, that's something where I wanted to give the gifted and talented pupils more control. It was made clear to them that they were responsible for bringing the group together and for drawing information out of their peers. All right, can everyone please get their folders? Thank you very much. OK, if you turn to your sheet with the clefts on it, you're going to need that out on the table for most of the lesson. This one right here with your clefts. Yeah, you need that out for the most of the lesson. Daniel has also changed the way he teaches. He's spending more time on drilling and reinforcing the basics so they're clear to the whole class. In this lesson, he's moved on from the waltz to the minuet. So just out of interest, let's see whose brain is switched on. Let's assume we are in the key of C and we're using a C chord. Somebody tell us what the notes would be for that bass line. One, five, three, five, three, five, if it was in C. C, G, E, G, E, G. Mm. Right. I've been trying to be a bit more harder on them. Like, remember we had that discussion about um, getting the folders out and so on and so forth. So instead of me walking around, it's like, look, the information's there. So I've been trying to make it more independent. This time you will not be choosing your groove. I've, I have chosen specific chords for you to use today. So when you're working together and helping each other, you're not saying, well, what's your chord? What's your chord? You've all got the same chords. You can help each other a bit more easier today. So I've given you a set chord sequence to use. <laughs> 
Daniel's been asking the students to work in pairs, so the talented ones can help the others to understand better what he's teaching. Has this given you more time, more room to work with the talented students? Um, yes and no. The thing I did make a point of doing was um, the better ones helping. So that did actually happen on two occasions because it was mainly catching up and reinforcing because they had finished. Um, instead of going for the stretching option, I went for the helping option. So I just said, look, right, you know it, explain it to them, and we just kind of helped a few more so people. So that's one of the things they can do. They can cement their skills by getting yeah. hold of other people who, who haven't yeah. and, 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 and teaching it. But John feels Daniel could be putting more pressure on the higher ability students and using them more effectively as a resource for the whole class. I sat down with one pupil and it was getting towards the end of the lesson, they were a bit tired. Mm. But they were going through those figures. And um, I said, I bet if I play the chord, bong, 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 you can't play all the different figures one after the other. Um, and actually, they could. Diddle, 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 diddle. Um, and it made me think of that idea of challenges. That you can't do this. Yeah, yeah. OK. So, I've done it! I was very interested in those girls because um, they'd sort of cracked it. And they were so excited by the fact that they cracked it, they started yattering to each other and to people around them. And I thought, ah, ha, ha, there could be one team going around explaining how you transpose a tune from one key to another. Yeah. There could be another team going around doing scale drills. Uh, they could either be going around and checking in their own right, or they could be reporting back to you uh, about who's got it and who hasn't got it. And they could be talking to you about the expositions um, that they're giving. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm happily would do that when I want use them to bring up the others for a little while without feeling that I'm, I should be pushing them more. I have no guilt for keeping them there for a little while to help the rest come up and then I can show them some more at other stages, you know what I mean? So I, I would gladly do that, actually. Right, boys and girls, welcome to today's chat show. In front of us, we have managed to get together a diverse group of people from Make Home Society. We're going to ask them questions. These questions will allow us, by magic powers, to get into their inner thoughts. Back in Fiona's class, it's time for the final activity, where her more able students are in the hot seat. Hello, Misha. Mrs Merriweather, why do you assume black people are bad? Um, I just think they're all sulky darkies, <laughs> and I don't like talking to them. They just get on my nerves. I can't stand black people. Mayela. What did you think about Atticus Finch questioning your father? Um, he was very demanding and offensive, and I don't think he should have been calling me mum because he, cause, um, he was mocking me, and there was no need for that. Mayella, why, why is it you think Atticus was mocking you? Do you not think he was just being polite and respectful? No, not really, because no one has shown me any respect in my life, so I wouldn't know what, what respect is. OK. There were two very separate groups in the lesson. We had the gifted and talented pupils and then the main class. However, I do strongly feel that the other pupils who, nece who weren't necessarily gifted and talented also enrich the gifted and talented by their own use of questioning. And I do think we need to use the pupils as a resource so they can learn from each other. Nathan, who's your question for? Scout. OK, Scout. Did you understand clearly what was going on an interview, and did you receive help from anyone? Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I understood everything. I'm almost nine years old, but I did have to ask Jem some stuff, but I still understood everything. OK, thank you. Pierre? Tom Robinson, do you think the appeal will work out for you? Not really. It might just be, like, the same thing again. It's racism. And what are your thoughts towards Atticus at this stage in your life, Tom? I'm very thankful that he tried his best, but we're, we're destined to fail anyway, so... In that hot seating activity at the end, um, 
That really brought everything to life, didn't it? Yeah. I, I felt a lot of them began to emote. Um, yeah. I, I began to feel the characters. Uh, they were very in. enthusiastic. Yes, there were a few lump in the throat moments there, weren't there? Do you really think Tom Robinson is innocent or do you really think he's guilty and you're just defending him to get on the good side of the black people? Ooh, interesting. <laughs> Different interpretation there. Nah, he's not guilty. He's not gay. Because <laughs> knowing what's going on these days, you should. <laughs> you're obviously very upset about it, so let's wrap it up there. <laughs> Well done to all of you. Little round of applause, please. OK. What have you learned from this? What's it, what, or what's it changed about you as a teacher? Um, I was always very wary of withdrawing pupils. I do feel that mixed ability groupings give the best results. I still feel that, but I also think that within a lesson, um, separate activities can be designed, perhaps in a starter or a plenary, just to give the gifted and talented pupils the opportunity to work on their own together so that they can be stretched more without being held back. Having watched two different teachers, John has found himself making similar suggestions. Think more strategically. Design activities so the more able students can work with the majority and both groups can benefit each other. What I've learned from this is that differentiation requires some structural work, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. it requires Definitely. Um, the structure in the lesson design, that, that some of the tasks given out will be different, uh, some of the groupings will be um, different. And if that structure isn't in there, it's very difficult to differentiate.